Hi everyone, my name is Radha, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a staff engineer on demand engineering team at Slack. Why are we call demand engineering is a topic for another day, but we look after ingress load balancing, TLS, SSL, service networking, among many other things. I'm not going to bore you all with details about where I worked before and why I have a master's degree. I got only 15 minutes, so let's get started. In 2019, our team decided to migrate all our ingress load balancing tier from HA proxy to Envoy proxy. This was mainly due to some operational overheads we had with HA proxy and some of the great features that Envoy offers. This talk won't go into details about why we decided to migrate and how we did that. We wrote a detailed blog post about it. See the link below. Two years, 15 days later, the migration was officially marked as complete. At this point, we have many Envoy tiers at Slack, one that handles all WebSocket connections, another one that handles all non-WebSocket connections at Slack, and list goes on. In next, well, 12 minutes or so, we're going to talk about some of the oops moments that happened during these migrations, steps we took to troubleshoot and mitigate, and a few key takeaways towards the end. This was during our web app load balancing tier migration. We have a set of envoys that load balances traffic to our web app tier. During mid-migration, we noticed an elevated 5xx error rate from our web API endpoints. This was detected internally, and we started digging. Retry was among the first things we looked at, and I was sure we had retries configured on connection failures. With that assurance, we moved on and tried a couple of things to get that error rate down, but nothing worked, unfortunately. One fine day, one of the team members noticed that there was a typo in our configuration. Instead of retrying on connect hyphen failure, we were retrying on connect underscore failure. <laughs> yeah, well, you may laugh now. It wasn't funny back then. <laughs> Uh, now the question is, how did that, cha uh, that change pass our testing or code review? In the version of Envoy we were running back then, retry on config field is a free form text which will ignore any unknown value, for example, connect underscore failure. Every time we make a change in our Envoy config, we do some validation using Envoy validate mode to ensure that the new config is valid before we replace the old one. Since Envoy ignored the unknown value, instead of editing out, this change missed our testing. To add to that, we had the same typo at other places, <laughs> and our tests were based on the wrong string. Though this behavior was uh, fixed later in Envoy version 1.11.0. So we corrected the typo in our configuration to fix the regression. We fixed our tests. And to ensure that this never happens ag again, we also fixed this in our library that generates Envoy configuration for us by explicitly specifying all the strings that Envoy supports for this config field and ensuring that library returns an error on any unknown value. This was during our web API load balancing tier migration. We have a set of envoys that handles all non-websocket traffic at Slack. During mid-migration, our customer experience team got a few tickets from one of our customers saying that they are getting HTTP response code 404 for some API endpoints, but only for 25% of the request, roughly. This escalated to us, and we could see that the timings of the error aligned perfectly with when we migrated 25% of the traffic to Envoy, while the rest 75% was still going to HA proxy in a specific region. Upon digging, we found that the request was appending default SSL port to HTTP host header, which is uncommon but not unsupported. The HTTP spec says one may specify a port number or omit it in case that's a default value. 
However, it doesn't say that one must not specify a port number in case that's a default. We didn't account for this behavior in our migration, and hence our envoys were configured to match only on the host name and not the port. This resulted in 404 as envoys were unable to find a route match for this type of request. So how did this work in HA proxy? The answer is quite simple in this case. We didn't have any host or authority-based routing rules in there. We accepted everything and forwarded to the backend. So in the end, we rolled back the migration to ease customer pain and later on made a change in our Envoy config to match on both host and host colon port. Up next, uh, this was also during our Web API load balancing tier migration. Our Edge Files team noticed an elevated 5xx error rate for our files traffic. This includes file upload, file download, or image upload, image download. Issue escalated to us, and our first thought was, are we retrying on connection failures? And that was literally it. Since we had seen this behavior before, we knew where to look and what to look for. We compared our Envoy config with corresponding HA proxy config and found that HA proxy was configured to retry three times on connection failures, whereas Envoy was configured with zero retries. We added retries in our Envoy config, and that brought down the 5xx error rate back to normal. This was by far the most difficult issue we have had. Our desktop team noticed 12% extra latency for every API request across all Slack clients. This, this issue escalated to us, and in the beginning, we struggled. We had a chart where lines were moving up, and that was bad. The chart that we had was coming from client, and the metric was not the metric was global. It wasn't broken down by region. We didn't have any error message or timeout or response flag to look at. It was hard for us to map an issue that we were seeing in our client to one or many config field or features that we had in our config. So we decided to enable tracing at the Envoy layer. This was the turning point as with traces, we discovered that the extra time was being taken before request processing starts. And TLS happens before that. So we started looking at all things TLS and noticed a bug in our TLS session ticket keys configuration. For those who don't know, uh, TLS session ticket key is a mechanism that allows our clients to reuse their TLS sessions when they reconnect within a short period of time, preferably a few hours, instead of going through a full TLS handshake every time they connect. This speeds up TLS handshakes and improves end user latency, especially for our customers connecting from APAC regions. The stock won't go into details on how it works and how to set it up. Please refer to RFC 5077. With that information out, I mentioned a minute ago that our desktop client team noticed 12% extra latency, and we traced it down to a bug in session ticket keys configuration. So the bug goes thusly. Sometimes the keys we were using to generate these session tickets were not synchronously rotated across all envoys, which means sometimes the request would come with a key that Envoy doesn't know about yet and hence required a full TLS handshake. Gives you the latency. <sighs> Ensuring synchronous key rotation across all Envoys fix the latency issue. With that, let's look at some of the things we learned along the way. This is by no means an exhaustive list. This is what worked for us. May or, not, may, or may not work for everyone. Parity first, improvement second. We have mistakenly missed retries and timeouts in nearly every migration. After a few times we missed these, 
we started copying over entire HA proxy config to our document, created tickets for each and every feature that we wanted to duplicate, and then linking those tickets back to the document. What really helped us is having both the document and the tickets peer reviewed by someone to ensure nothing was amiss. You can never have one-to-one -one mapping between two technologies or even the features. So aim for parity. Parity is more important than added feature. It reduces the number of variables your rollout depends on. I cannot emphasize more on this. Keep rollback or revert plan fast and simple. Fast rollbacks are more important than getting things right the first time. Prepping a rollback pull request, tested, reviewed, and approved can do wonders sometimes. We didn't have automatic rollbacks, but as these were simple DNS toggle of traffic between old and new load balancing tier, merging the change and deploying a Terraform pipeline only took a few minutes. <sighs> Evaluate risks and manage expectations accordingly. In any big migration, there is always a risk of causing in incidents or outages, and those are disruptive for everyone, especially for our customers. Know that you are very likely to break things and make sure this is communicated to the business or organization during initial plan planning phases. Communicate why this migration is happening and how does that benefit the organization. Communicate what is the rollback plan and how long will that take. This makes rollout stress-free because the last thing you want is having to justify the risks or the migration itself in the middle of an incident or similar. <sighs> Curl is such a powerful tool. Uh, more than 95% of the configuration changes were tested using Curl, ranging from cha uh, routing changes to TLS and much more. I have a lot more to say about Curl, but I will save that for another time. Bear in mind that it is not a one tool to test all the things. We wrote comprehensive tests to ensure that we never merge broken or invalid config, which mean, by which I mean anything that doesn't pass Envoy Validate mode. And this has worked quite well for us so far. This is all for me today. Thank you for listening. I'm sorry I'm late. Um, hope you all learned something from our mistakes. Have a nice evening.